hoping he'd just go on. Amen. 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 I just, if y'all hear something knocking, it's just my knees. Amen. This morning, I'd like to talk to you for just a few minutes about our position in Christ. Our position in Christ. We'll be reading out Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3 through 5, and then we'll, in Ephesians also, we'll read a few more scriptures, and I'll let you sit down. Our position in Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ, according as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Heaven predestinated us into the adoption of children by Jesus Christ himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. In chapter 2 of the same book of Ephesians 19 and 20 reads like this. It says, Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers or foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints. Aren't you thankful we're fellow citizens with Jesus? Amen. And of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of apostles and of prophets, and Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Would you join me in prayer this morning? And the church said, Amen. Amen. I'm thankful to be in the house this morning. Amen. I'm thankful that, Brother Larry, there was nothing I could do to, to, oh, I'm sorry, you can be seated. I'm sorry. I'm thankful that there was nothing that I had to do or I could do, Brother Junior, to become a part of the household of God. I'm thankful that God already knew my past, Brother JT, before he gave me a new beginning in him. I'm thankful that in this life I have no doubt, Brother Chris, that, that I'm going to inherit a great kingdom because I don't have those kind of people in my family tree. But Brother Danny, I'm thankful the Lord said he went away to prepare a place for me. Amen. And, and, and he's done told us, the preachers told us that, that all this is all going to burn up anyway. Brother Burtz, I don't want to tie down anything here that I'm not willing to walk away from. Amen. I'm thankful that God made a position for me in his body. I'm thankful that, you know, when I was a boy and lived at home, uh, Brother Rayleigh, whatever daddy had was mine. And when I got married and moved off, it was still mine. Amen. Brother Kevin, when, when there was something, if he had a shovel or an axe that I wanted to use, I just helped myself to it. Amen. I don't know how your dad's was, but my dad, he never complained about that. Sometimes, Brother Daryl, them tools come home, and sometimes they didn't. You know, I don't know about y'all. Maybe you and Brother Kenny, maybe you return all your stuff. But there was a lot. Amen, Brother Kenny. Thank you for that. There's a lot of times that daddy's stuff never went back home, Brother Jerry. Amen. But it was mine because he was my father, and I'm thankful for a God that said, whatever's mine, son, is yours. Amen. I'm thankful. I'm, I'm so thankful that he made a place in his kingdom and in his world for me. I'm so thankful for that. I, I, I wrote this down. It says, because God has made us citizens of his kingdom, we must live no longer as strangers, but be, but be as heirs of his kingdom. Well, there it makes me think when I read that, that God wants us to be sons of his and daughters of his. He wants us. He said, and we're going to get to that in just a few minutes. He says, come boldly before the throne. Amen. Make your petitions known, Brother Junior. Amen. I never had no problems uh, asking my dad for anything. You know, there was a many times that they babysitted for us, Sister Debbie. And, you know, we just say, hey, Mom, you know, we're going. And they just take the little girls and they take care of them. I'm thankful for parents, but most of all, I'm thankful for God. I'm thankful for that when he said it was finished, that 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 that, that veil of the temple was rent, Brother Jack, from top to bottom. Amen. There, it was no more, no separation. We didn't need a high priest because he was. Amen, Sister Jane. He was our high priest. And, and I'm thankful we don't need a, need a middle person to talk for us, that we can talk to the Lord for him. Aren't you thankful that any time, any time that you can engage yourself, brother, being with the Lord, aren't you thankful? Whether you're riding down the road in a bus or in your truck or you're on a lawnmower. Pastor, I'm so thankful that it ain't got to be a certain day or a certain time or a certain hour. Amen. 
I'm thankful that whatever time and when the need is there, when the need ain't there. I like to talk to the Lord, Brother Wayne, when there ain't a need. Amen. Amen. I like for my children to call and say, how y'all just check up on us sometimes, Brother Allen. I don't always like them when they call, they hardly ever do, and say they've got a problem. Amen. But that's the way a lot of people treat the Lord. Brother Chavo, a lot of times people don't ever talk to the Lord unless they've got a problem. Amen. But, and I'm thankful for a God that's got time to listen to us. In Colossians 1, 21 and 22, and it says, And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now he reconciled in the body of his flesh through death to present you holy, unblameable, and unreproved in his sight. Ephesians 2, 12 and 13 says that at that time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from, from the covenants of the promise. Listen to this. It says, having no hope, having no hope, and without God in the world. Now, the church, this is a good word here, but now. Church say, but now. In Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. I'm so thankful for the but now. Brother Kenny, aren't you thankful but for now? I, I, I was lost and undone, and I was on the wide road, but the Lord's got me on the straight and the narrow path. Amen. He said, many are called, but he said, few are chosen. I'm thankful to be part of the called and the chosen this morning. Romans 5, 6 through 8 said, for when we were yet without strength. Now think about this. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. The Bible said, for scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet preadventure for a good man, some would even dare to die. But God commanded his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, while we was yet sinners, Christ died for us, Sister Tanya. Aren't you thankful? The Lord didn't say, I'm going to wait until they get cleaned up. Says Jessica, I'm going to wait until they get everything in line. He said, all you that labor and heavy laden, he said, come unto me, Brother Tim. And he said, I'll give you rest. I'm thinking about, I heard Brother Arnold say one time when we was going over to church over there, he, he looked out across the congregation and he said, if y'all knew who was sitting beside you, you wouldn't leave your purse on the bench. <laughs> Amen. See, Sister Melinda, when we get to church on Sunday, we're all cleaned up. Amen. Amen. And Brother Boyd don't always ask you background before he invites you to church. Amen. But, you know, I mean, the, the, I mean, think about that. Amen. You know, we all like to have new cars that are cleaned up and shiny. Amen. But the Lord said, I'll take you as a junker. I'll take you all dented up, beat up, your paints are fading, you got no thread on your tires, your engines are clicking and a clocking. He said, man, I'll take that. Amen. I'm thankful for that, Sister Edith. Amen. I'm thankful to be part of the family of God. In 1 Peter 1 and 18 through 19, for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things, but think about this, as silver and gold from your vain conversations received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as a lamb without blemish and without spot. Brother Darrell, I'm so thankful that I serve a God that come and wrapped himself in flesh and walked the same steps that me and you walked. See, it's one thing for Brother Kenny to take me and try to teach me how to build a house. There's a lot of things I won't ever understand what he's talking about, Brother Larry. But it's another thing for, me to, for him to put me in his hip pocket and say, when I take a step, you take a step. When I beat on that board, you beat on that board. When I cut that board, you cut that board. And really, that's what the Bible did. When, when, I mean, that's what the Lord done when he gave us the Holy Ghost. The Bible said that the Holy Ghost would lead and guide us into all truth. Aren't you thankful for the Spirit of God, whether you're at the house or you're not at the house? It says, Patricia, the Lord is right there with you. I'm so thankful for a God that loved us and walked, because the Bible said that he was tempted in all points like we are. But the Bible said, yet without sin. It says, Amen, I'm so thankful for that. I'm thankful for a God that said, I'm going to go where you're going so I can understand what you're going through. So says, boy, it's so easy. You know, when I worked at Win dixie I loved being the supervisor. Amen. I like to be the boss. We just walk around, point your finger at stuff, and keep walking. And then you come back when it ain't done, brother. And when it ain't done, you know, you just say, Brother Kevin used to work with us at Wendy's. That's why I just left that alone. 
But here's what I'm trying to tell you. It's another thing, Brother Jack. It's another thing to get there and do what Brother Kevin had to do. Because it's more than just doing, putting stuff. Because somebody comes up and wants some help. There's a cleanup on aisle 53. There's some sharpened carts out on the lot. He understands that. I don't understand that when I walk by and point my finger at him and said, I need this done. Aren't you thankful for God when you go to him, Sister Bev, in prayer, that God knows just what you're talking about? I don't know about y'all, but it just amazes me, Brother Wayne, that God would love me enough to invite me into his family, to invite me, a lost sinner, rank old sinner, that he come, if he, I'm confident if, he, if it wasn't but one person was going to make it to heaven, Jesus would have come and went through all that. All that that he went through, Brother Richard, just so that one person could be saved. So we're talking about our position in Christ. We, I, you know, uh, um, I want to talk to you very quickly about a young lady in the book of Joshua chapter 2 that we all know a lot about. A lot of times when people talk about her, and her name is Rahab, they always end, put these other two words to the back side of her name. It says the harlot. Rahab the harlot. Amen. They just say John, or they say Peter, or even old Judas. But everybody always talks about Rahab the harlot, Sister Debbie. I'm thankful for a God that said, hey, I'll just throw your sins in the sea. I'll just forget all of those. I'm thankful for a God that said, I'm just going to throw your sins behind my back and never to be recognized again. So here's the great thing about God, Brother JT. If, if, if somebody's talking in your mind about your past, it ain't Jesus. It's your adversary, the devil. That's who's bringing those points back up. I thought about how Rahab and Joshua 2 9 through 13. Now, let me, you know, really, if we were starting a team, I'm going to try to stay on course this morning, Brother Donnie. But if you were starting a team, probably Rahab the harlot wouldn't be in your pick. That would be in a good place to say amen. Because if you're out in the neighborhood and, and you know what I'm saying, if you're going to be knocking on wood, um, wood, on doors, and you happen to know that, you know what I'm saying, Miss Rahab's business, you... <laughs> You might just say, Pastor, I just didn't work that one right there. I just went on down three doors down because Brother Darrell, he lives down there, and I like Brother Darrell. I can talk to Brother Darrell. But you know this Rahab lady, she's a harlot. And really, Brother Jerry, you know, we really don't want those people up in your congregation, you know, because the people's going to talk. But aren't you thankful for a God that says, I don't know anything about your past? It don't matter what anybody says about you. Jesus said, I died for you, Brother Toby. And he died for, you know, and, and, and aren't you thankful that, that he'd go and use, and then he'd put her, this young lady in the Bible, Sister Peggy, so everybody through generations could talk about this lady called the harlot. Aren't you thankful for a God that just didn't get all the best players and put them all in the best part? I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. But let me tell you a little bit about this Rahab the harlot. There was some, some um, Joshua had sent out some spies out in the land of Canaan. The Lord said, you're going to take this after they'd come through the wilderness. And they went over to Canaan to scope it all out. And they went into this harlot's house. And this is what she said to the two spies. She said, and I want you to think about this. Really, when I read this, I often think about this is probably what the devil says about us that's been saved and baptized in Jesus' name and full of the Holy Ghost. And she, and she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land. Talking about her land, the land of Canaan. And that your terror is falling upon, all, upon us. And that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. Think about that, Brother Hal. They was already in terror just waiting for their whipping. Amen. I remember many times Dad would say, I need you to mow this yard. And somebody would come by and say, let's go play. Mow a yard. Go play. Mow yard. Go play. So when Daddy got home, the yard wouldn't mow. Y'all know what happened, and I'll keep moving on. But, but I, I, I'm so thankful, and he said, because they was ready. They knew Brother Larry. They had done heard the story. She's going to say that in just a minute. And verse 10 said, For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you. When ye came out of Egypt and what, what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And verse 11 said, And as soon as we heard these things, our heart did melt. 
I just wonder, Brother Donnie, when the devil hears you up rumbling around in the house, he says, oh, my God, he's awake. I'm just going to leave him alone today. I just wonder, have y'all ever heard stories, or maybe somebody in y'all's family used to go out in the woods, Sister Joy, and, and I heard preachers talk about how their family, maybe fathers or whatever, would go out in the woods and just pray for hours, and you could hear them just pray. And I, I heard a preacher talk about the other day how his mother-in-law was in his house and said he was up at 2 o'clock in the morning to get some milk and some Oreos, said his mother-in-law was in his bedroom just crying out to God. Sister Susan, what's happened to those people? Church, we got to get back to that. We got to let the devil know we are at war. We at war, church. We at war because we got lost and loved ones out there. We got to stand up and say, you know, I'm willing to pay the price. Because here's what it says right here. It says, and as soon as we had heard these things, the devil ought to be trembling when we wake up, says Jamie. The devil ought to say, I ain't going to mess with them no more. I'm just going to leave old brother Hal alone because every time I stir up his nest, what he does, he goes on a fast. He starts setting himself aside. He starts praying. He starts reading. He starts witnessing. Amen, church. But sometimes, you know, he'll just walk by and huff and puff and sister Edith, we run and hide in the corner. Call 12 prayer partners and say, y'all need to get him off of me. Amen. As soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, your God, he is God in the heavens above and in the earth beneath. She said, now, therefore, I pray you swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that ye will show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that ye will save alive my father, my mother, my brethren, and my sisters, and all that they have, and deliver our lives from thee. We're talking about our position in Christ. So, so Rahab is saying, I've helped you, spies. I've hid you. They're coming to look for you. I'm going to hide you. But I need something. Sister Betty, she said, look here. I need something. She said, we know this land's already yours. We know you're coming to conquer it. Didn't say that she had a relationship with the Lord. Didn't say she'd been in 15 hours of prayer. But she knew. Somehow she knew that those two spies were sent. They were Israelis, and they were sent from God on a mission. And she said, I ain't worried about just myself, Brother Jack. I'm worried about my mom. I'm worried about my dad. I'm worried about my brother, and I'm worried about my sister. Are you worried about your family, church? Are you willing to go to the whatever extreme it is with your walk with God to see God work a miracle in your family? It's one thing to get Brother Wayne excited about praying for your family, Brother Larry. <laughs> but it's another thing to get Brother Larry excited about Brother Larry's family. Good place to say amen, church. Oh, see, we're all part of the family of God. And we got to be ready to fight at the drop of the hat. Because as that day draws closer, the devil's going to intensify the heat, church. Amen. But we, we are well prepared. We've got a God that's done went down there and took the keys from him. He's powerless, church. He, he goes about as a roaring lion. He ain't the roaring lion because we serve the lion of the tribe of Judah. Amen. He's just out there hustling, huffing and puffing, church. But Rahab said, I, I, I'm going to do you a favor. And she said, he's, they said, well, here's this thread. I said, you put this thread out the window. Because when we come back, if they're not in your house, they're not going to make it because you showed us kindness. And we're going to show you kindness, but they need to be in your house. And we know this is the, in, in Jericho where they walked around, you know, the walls one time, didn't say nothing. Then the seventh time, they walked around it seven times, blew the, and all the walls fell. Now, the Bible said, if you keep reading this story, and I got there, I'm running out of time. It says that her house was on the wall. I'm looking at pastor. But she survived. The wall, the Bible said that the walls fell down. Aren't you thankful for, no, for a God that can keep you through everything? It don't matter if all hell comes against you. Amen. God can take care of your situation. Because we know that the devil's a liar and a father of all lies. If he, he can't tell the truth, if he had to, but he can't. 
But here's what I thought was amazing. The, the, the two spies went back, and this is what they told Joshua in chapter 2, verse 24, at the end of this story about Rahab. And they said unto Joshua, Truly the Lord hath delivered into our hands all the land, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. I want to take you back to memory lane real quickly here. When Joshua and Caleb was part of 12 spies that Moses sent out to discover the promised land, to see what was out there. And they come back after 40 days and said, it's everything that God said it was, Brother Kevin. They come back, I think I'm right, by toting a clump of grapes on a stick. Now, I worked in Winn-Dixie for 17 years and Walmart for two, but I've never handled a grapes that it took to come in on a stick. Amen. And they showed them the pomegranates. And they said, it's really what it is. But there was this 10 of those 12 spies that said, yeah, but in our own eyes, we look like grasshoppers. Caleb and Joshua said, yeah, this is what they said in Numbers 14 and 6 through 9. Joshua the son of Nun and Caleb the son of Jephthah, which were of them that searched the land, rent their clothes. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, now, and saying, The land which we pass through to search it is exceedingly good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into this land and give it us in a land which floweth with milk and honey. But he said, Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense has departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. I thought about when old Joshua heard that, when the two spies told him back in Joshua 2 and 24, I wonder if he just didn't do a little dance right then. Because God, I, I wonder if he didn't think, Brother Junior, you know, Lord, you told us. Because she said, Rahab told him, said, we done heard about how your God dried up the Red Sea. Brother Allen, they was there for the taking. But 10 of them said, gave an evil report, the Bible said. How is it, church, that negative, just a little negative work can just wipe out a whole lot of faith? They had the evidence. It was there in their hands. The word of God had done told them. Moses said, we're going to go get it. It's ours. Caleb said, let's go get this thing. They're bred to us. Rahab backed it up. She said, our hearts trembled. We fainted. We heard about what your God done back there when he dried up the Red Sea. I thought about how that this great faith at Rahab, that a lot of us probably wouldn't have went out and had dinner with her, Brother Ben. But Rahab, by faith, made her, her entrance into the New Testament in Hebrews 11 and 31. And James mentions her too, chapter 2, verse 25. I thought about in Hebrews 13 and 2, it says, Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unaware. I thought about if old Rahab would have said, I don't want to mess with these two guys. I wonder what would have happened to her family, Brother Larry. They might not have made it out when those walls fell, had they? See, Brother Andy, we never know when God might have an angel there for us to, that he's pushing us toward to maybe give a little lending hand or to, to, to just help out for just a little bit. See, Brother Orlando, a lot of times we just walk by people and say, nah, we make a determination that that person can or cannot be saved. I'd be willing to bet you most of us probably wouldn't ever went by Rahab's house and invited her to church. Amen, church. The other day I went to a friend of ours' house that, that um, has loaned us money when we was buying and selling property. And uh, he's an elderly gentleman, and real nice guy, don't, he cut straight to the chase, Sister Debbie. And um, Anyway, he said something to me, and I thought it was rather humorous, so I thought I'd share it with y'all this morning. Um, he said, Wayne, the first time I ever met you, he said, I wasn't too impressed. I said, well, I felt that way myself a lot of times. I've been with me a long time. He didn't embarrass me a bit. I, I was right there with him, Brother Hal. Hey, man. I said, that don't impress me too much, man. I already figured that much out. But this is what I told him. I said, but God had chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. See, he, he, he loves my honey. He thinks honey hung the moon. And I do too most of the time. But he said this. He said, 
you're a better man because of your wife. And I said, well, that's probably true. But don't ever forget that it's God. Don't ever forget it's the favor of God. Because you understand, brother, how the best you can do for me stops. At some point, it stops. Don't ever be like Nebuchadnezzar and get out on your back and balcony and look around and say, is this not great Babylon that I've built? Because if you'll look that up, if you don't remember that story, he went out and spent some time in the outside with the cows for about seven years. Amen, church. See, it's easy to get caught up, and that's what I was trying to tell this brother. He didn't mean that meanly, and I understand that, Sister Susan. But I didn't want God to misinterpret what I went back to him. Because I wanted God to know that I know where I come from. And if we have anything, just anything, it's because of God, Brother Richard. See, the devil would love for you to look around. Look around and say, look at this. Oh, look what I've done. See, you moved God out of number one position, and you've took number one position. I don't care what people tell you, church. You move God out of his position, he's going to back on out of the way and let you have it all. God ain't your co-pilot. He better be your pilot. Amen. He better be, he better be directing it all. So that man didn't embarrass me a, a bit, Brother Tim. I thought it was kind of funny myself. As a matter of fact, I told two or three people about it. Because huh? I want you to understand, if you see Wayne and Sharon Williams, if there's anything, anything that we have or have, have obtained, it's all because of God. I'm, and I'm, I got to stay on course because I got to wrap this thing up pretty quickly. But I'm talking about our position in Christ. I remember a day that we got a phone call. I got a phone call. And she said, you know, I'm fired. I said, good God. You know, you don't wake up in the morning just thinking you're going to go to work and be fired. The name of our world was just turned upside down. But I would tell you from that day to today, God's done so many wonderful things for us, Brother Chris. I can't even tell you. Because, see, we never stop giving. See, our, our, our pastor told us a long time ago, he said, you give until it hurts and then give some more. And when you talk about giving people, oh, I don't want you to get my money. It ain't always about your money. It's about your time. It's about your effort. It's about a kind word. It's about staying involved with God. So you could very well got mad with God and just turned around and walked off. But, man, I look back at that, Brother Howell, and I think, God, you just pulled us out of such a horrible, horrible place. Church, you don't just get that everywhere. So we get that because God first loved us. It ain't because we were good and we should have been saved. No, no. The Bible says something about our self, our righteousness is filthy rags in his nostrils. The very best you can do still stinks to God. But when you let God take the lead role, when you allow your position in Christ, that you understand that he's the head. Amen, church. He's the head. I quoted this a while ago, but I want to talk to you real quickly in the, about the power of prayer. Hebrews 4, 15 and 16 says, For we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. This is what he said, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in a time of need. Aren't you thankful for when you need God? God's there, Brother Kenny. He may not, we may not think he is, Brother Ben. The devil might lie to us and say, Sister Sherry, he really ain't there, but he's there. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. I want to talk to you real quickly about a vision that Daniel had. You know, I've often heard people talk about the Daniel's fast in chapter 1. I've not heard very many pre people preach about the Daniel's fast in chapter 10. Let me just read this real quickly for you. It said that he had seen a vision, and he'd prayed about this vision for three weeks. He said he ate no pleasant bread or meat or wine and didn't take a bath. I heard that. Uh oh, that eliminated a lot of us right there, wouldn't it? But he was sincere. Church is what I'm trying to drive at. He wanted to get an answer from God. Amen. Says, Have you ever been in a place? And I'm telling you the truth, church. When you get serious with God, God will get serious with you. So to me, I guarantee you, when you say, God, I, I'm ready, God says, I've been waiting on you. I'm here waiting on you. 
Chapter 10, 11 through 13, this is what the angel told Daniel. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Then said he unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day, church say first day, that thy didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard. The first day. How about that, church? He said, I'm just going to just, if pastor don't mind, I'm going to just take a little liberty here for just a minute. I thought the word was telling me today, when you got serious, I'm serious. That's what he said. He said, he said now you ready? He, he said, but aren't you thankful that God heard you, Sister Sherry, the first day? I'm sure that everybody in here has prayed prayers that you thought, man, that ain't the devil said, you're just wasting your time, man. Why don't you get back out there on the lawnmower and go back to mowing? Why don't you go back to Walmart and see? Because you know God, no, he don't care nothing about you. And about that eighth day, you're thinking, you know what, devil, you got something there. Amen, church. But the angel said, and we know God's no respect to person. He said, from the first day, he said, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20 days. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me, and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Let me tell you what the book of Revelation says about minding your prayers. It says, when he had taken the book, the four beasts and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them a harp and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of the saints. Prayers of saints. Revelation 8, 3 through 4. And another angel came and stood at the altar having a golden censer, and there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense which came with the prayers of the saints ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. Church, the Lord cares about what you care about. I'm so thankful. Have you ever, <laughs> Sir Jane, has anybody ever gave you something and you looked at it and you made a determination right then you really weren't going to wear it or use it and you just kind of threw it in the closet? Y'all should have said amen. That was another good place for an amen. I, I can't believe my friends are the only people that, never mind. But Brother Kenny, the Lord's telling you right there. He didn't take mine and your prayers and just throw them in a the closet somewhere. They made their way all the way up. Made it all the way up. So see, there is no such thing as no little prayer. There is no such thing as just a small problem or a big problem. It's just about what you what you want God to do for you, Brother Wayne. See, y'all know I've been with y'all three years now. Y'all know I'll just pray for most anything. It don't make a hoot with me. Because I like to pray. and Because I, I like here's what I've understood about prayer. If you keep reaching and stretching yourself for God, God will back it up. Amen. Because he said he didn't give us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind, Brother Chris. See, fear will grip him, walk in your mind if you let it, Sister Sherry, and tell you you don't pray for that. You know how stupid you are. Who cares about that? Who cares about that? Real quickly, and I got to wrap this up, but we had bought a pressure washer and I had taken, taken it to a place to use it. And I use it for, and I have one at the house. I and mean, I'm not very mechanically inclined. Y'all already picked up on that. But I was using this new pressure washer, and Brother Dale, it just come out. I mean, a, a water hose would go faster than that. And I just got frustrated. And I don't mind to tell you, I was really hoping, Brother Donnie, that Honey had bought that pressure washer for me. So I could have got mad at her. But she, I bought the thing, so it was all on me. I know maybe you husbands don't think like Brother Wayne does. That's okay. I, I'll, I'll just eat that one by myself. But all I knew to do, Brother Leonard, was to pray. And I said, God, I, I, this thing's got to do better. I'll be here forever. I won't ever get this done. And I surely, and it maybe not, but I just felt like Brother Jerry, the Lord spoke to me and said, there's a knob on that thing. said, you just need to turn it. Oh, that's real funny. Y'all maybe knew where the knob was. I didn't know. I spent a whole tank of gas praying and working that thing, Brother Jack, just to pray. 
God, we got to do better. So when I run out of gas, thank the Lord, Sister Betty, I thought maybe I ought to turn this knob. Y'all know the rest of that story, don't you, Sister Amy? Man, that thing, I could pressure wash the shingles off the house. Now, but see, Brother Kenny, I just didn't know. You understand what I'm saying? The, the devil said, why don't you box that thing up, take it back to Lowe's where you got it from, and give it back to him. Get your money back. And you know, those people would have been laughing me all the way out the door going, that dummy, all you had to do was just, just they'd have been calling their friends, texting. This guy just walked. You understand what I'm saying, Bud Junior? I didn't know anything to do. I couldn't go blame money for buying it. It was on me. Here's what I'm trying to tell you, church. God loves you. God loves you. He died. He gave his life on the cross. He didn't die for him, said Jamie. He died for me and you. He didn't take those stripes on his back for his healing. He done that for me and you. He said he went away to prepare a place for you. In closing, I got to wrap this up. Talking about our position in Christ. And the Lord makes this statement that is just always just rings in my mind. Mark 4 and 35 through 41. Everybody knows the story. And the same day when the evening was come, he saith unto them, let us pass over unto the other side, talking to his disciples. When they had sent away the multitude, they took him even as he was in the ship, and there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of wind and waves beat into the ship, so that it was now full. Have you ever had a great storm rise up in your life? The wind's hollering, and you look at your ship, and it looks like maybe it's fixing to go down. The Bible said, verse 38 said, and he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on a pillow. You ever felt like God was asleep in your time of need? Amen. And they awake him and say unto him, and I don't think they said this very softly. I think they were screaming, Master, carest thou not that we perish? Might I remind you that four of those folks that was on that boat possibly was fishermen. And I believe they probably had storms in their life when they was out fishing. Brother Kevin. But there's something about this storm that just scared them to death. They just screamed. And y'all stay with me right here. And he said, and he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, why are ye so fearful? You ever thought God might have thought that about me or you? And this is a verse, this part of the verse. How is it that you have no faith? How is it that you have no faith? The Bible said in verse 41, And they feared exceedingly, and said one to another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the seas obey him? I've often thought about, Brother Jerry, for all the great things that God's done for me and my family. I wonder if he's ever said, Wayne, how is it that you have no faith? Of all the things, Brother Larry, that God's been so very kind to show me, and do for me. There's been times, even recent, that I've just seemed like I just get sideways. Some time ago, I asked Brother Boyd for a T-shirt that he had preached in, and he looked at me like I'd lost my mind. He, too, like my friend, was not very impressed with Wayne. (laughs) And Sister Boyd wasn't even close to being impressed with my request. But let me take you to the book of Acts, chapter 19, verse 11 through 12. This is why I wanted that prayer cloth. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto him the sick handkerchiefs, or aprons, and the disease departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Some time ago, I guess the last time that I spoke, I told you about we was in outside of Atlanta, and it broke down. Well, anyway, uh, the Lord put Humpty Dumpty back together when we come home. We come to church one Wednesday night. I'll get this thing flipped over in a minute. We come to church one Wednesday night, and uh, it started showing its old colors again. Honey, as honey does, she said, what are we going to do? I said, we're going home. She said, no, no, we're staying right here. What are we going to do, sleep in the car? We're going home. So she drove down the road a little bit. And she said, there's something wrong with this car. you got to drive. I said, all right. So we got out the car. I drove home. 
called a, a guy that we know, a girl that works with honey, her husband, and he said, listen, transmission sounds like to me that will be 2000 Up in Georgia, they told us it would be 4000 I said, ain't going to be no days like that. Just ain't going to do it. So I got that T-shirt that Pastor Boyd gave me. Cut that dude up. And when I drive that little blue car, if you look on that steering wheel, there's a prayer cloth of Brother Boyd's on that car. I kid you not. It's there. So ever since we put it on there, it showed a little bit, act up a little bit, Brother Hal, but it's still a going. So about two Fridays ago, I took that dude off to Gainesville. I had to go over there for a situation, and the lights lit up. And I said, oh, the same thing that lit up when he was going to Georgia. The devil said, you're going to be broke down on the side of the road. I said, devil, you are a liar. And mash the gas, and we come on the chiefer. Amen. I think the warning lights come on again. I said, I'm just driving you. If you blow up, you're going to blow up in Jesus' name. Here's my point, church. Faith without works is dead. Could I get you to stand? I'll leave you with this. I'm going to have a word of prayer, and we'll get out and wave and, and tell each other how much Jesus loves us, and we're thankful to be part of the family. There's nothing impossible to those that believe. Join me in prayer.